Hey, so you started 3D printing, but you really don't know where this is going to be the quick video for you. So we're going to use a couple of pieces of software. Number one, Tinkercad and two, a slicer, depending on which 3D printer you have. I got something going right back there right now. Okay, guys, so I am in Tinkercad. If you just go to Tinkercad.com, basically what we're going to create is a 3D model right here that we can download as an STL file, and then we pop it over to the driver for the printer, just like you would with anything else. If you've never created an account at Tinkercad, it's easy, it's free, just do it. Once you get into Tinkercad, as long as you have this little Rubik's Cube looking thing up here, you're good. Now, when it opens, it's going to open blank and you can zoom in and out. You can grab this little box up at the top to rotate over this. So I'm going to show you how I made one of these. One of the designs that I had to work on recently was for our wrestling team. They came to me and said, hey, you know, in our laws, we have to select the weight that we start at in a meet uh, randomly. And so we could put it on a popsicle stick. But wouldn't it be cool if we could 3D print something? And uh, heck, yes. So basically what I did is I made a poker chip and I engraved the weight on it and then I downloaded it, right? Du just duplicated it a bunch of times. They're basically stupid simple. So there are two things. They are a cylinder, which you can see right here. And then they are a spot of text that I just turned into a hole instead of a, a thing, right? So if somebody grabbed onto this in a grab bag, you wouldn't want them to be able to feel it. So it isn't raised, it's recessed. Really easy to do. So I'm gonna show you that super fast. So I'm just gonna grab this guy right here and I'm gonna plop it down. Now I'm gonna adjust my angle because I'm looking sort of top down. And you can see it's sitting on the bottom if I put it that way. When I click on my shape, actually I wanna get um, a little bit above it. I don't want that, I want the box. So I don't want it 20 millimeters tall, maybe five millimeters. Nope. Let's go down to three. And there we are. So now that I got that and I'll show you what it looks like from the top. It's a lot like the other ones. What I'm, as long as I have this solid, doesn't matter what color because it's not going to print in the color you have selected. It's going to print in the color of the PLA or ABS plastic you have loaded in your machine. So now once I have that, I'm going to click away and I'm going to grab this text box and I'm going to drag it out and plop it down. It is way too big, but that's okay because it's super easy to adjust. And I'm going to drag it around. Let's say I want something like that slapped down right in the middle. And I'm going to change this to for 91 pounders. It was a tournament weight and wow, those were kids were little. Anyway, once I get there, I need to, I want, might want to adjust the size so it's a little bit more readable. But see, this is going to print. Let's zoom or scroll. It's going to print on top. I don't want that. So this guy over here, if I click the orange one, was how tall? It's three millimeters tall. So when I click the text box, then I want to grab this top one and I want to make this guy just maybe one. There's two millimeters tall. And I'm going to grab the arrow with the top of it. And I'm going to drag it up until I can see it. Now, basically what that means is it's two meters tall, but it's at the top of a three meter um, disc. So it's going to recess down two millimeters. I don't really need it to do two. One is probably fine, but that's OK. So let's look at the top. Now, basically, what I did uh, is I just copied this, pasted it a bunch of times, clicked on the text, changed it, made sure it looked good, and then we printed it. So now this is going to be recessed. If I scroll down, that's a hole in that little poker chip looking thing. So if I want to get this to the 3D printer, because I'm done. Design whatever you want, Tinkercad, play around with it. Really cool thing. But I, by the way, with the text, oh, I needed to create that a hole. That one needs to be positive. And my, that's the step I forgot. My text box needs to be a hole. So I click that. Now it's going to, you know, leave that as negative space. So now if I go up here to export and I export this, it asks me what I need. So most of these files, uh, STL is going to be what you want for a 3D printer. Some 3D printers OBJ, but OBJ is um, probably going to be better off if you're moving towards Blender or 3D animation or something like that. So SVG, that's the one you're going to use if you are engraving something in wood or cutting it out of metal with a plasma cutter. So I'm going to click STL and then it's just going to download it for me. OK, so I'm done with Tinkercad. Now, because I have a Dremel, 
that's behind me. I have a Dremel 3D printer. I need their software. I'll put this link in the description. I just go to software. I'm on a Mac, so I just download it. It's right there. And I'm gonna go to my downloads folder. Okay, so you can see the Dremel Digilab 3D Slicer program coming up. What I'm gonna be doing is I'm gonna be adding my STL file, making sure it all looks good in the slicer. I'm gonna slice it, export it to a flash drive, and as you can see, um, I'm printing from a flash drive right now. Best way, if your print takes a long time, you can set it up uh, overnight, over the weekend, and just walk away and not have to leave your machine tied to the printer. Okay, so I'm in here at my Dremel Digilab. Uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to File, and I'm going to open a file. In my Downloads folder is that Weights STL. I hit Open, and there's the thing that I just made. Now, I can go over here and scroll around and look at it, but I know right now it's good. On the Dremel, if you have this particular 3D printer, uh, one of the things you need to do is you need to select what kind of plastic you have. I'm at PLA, I'm gonna print high quality. You don't have to, it'll be faster, but you might have some issues with stringing or whatever. Infill, something I noticed about the Dremel is uh, you, re you need to select this. Now, the MakerBot doesn't do this. It automatically builds it in beforehand as like a set default. I like 20% for things, but it depends on how much plastic you want in the middle where things are hidden and how much plastic you have access to if you want to go about wasting it. And it gives you a little bit of information about it if you hover over a little tool tip there. So generate support. I would recommend generating support. What that's going to do is that's going to put down a raft underneath that it floats on and you can scrape it off when you're all done. And it actually, if there's any imperfections in the printing bed, they're gonna end up being absorbed by that raft and then your print's gonna be pretty good. So build plate adhesion, sure, I'm gonna leave that alone. I'm gonna hit prepare. So now this is gonna go ahead and break this into files that the printer understands and, and then it's gonna tell me it's all done. And when it's all done, it's gonna ask for removable drive. This is where you plug in that uh, USB drive and you just save that file. And you're gonna notice if I hit save file, it's a G code file, looking right here, a G code file. There's a couple of printers that use this format, MakerBot does not, but um, if you have a Dremel, you can save it as a G code file and you're all good to go. So that's it, title it whatever you want, hit save, pop that USB in, and then I'll show you how to handle it on the printer. All right, so here we are over on the Dremel Digital Lab printer and you can see I have my USB drive plugged in and here we are on the menu screen. So basically what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hit build. That basically means we're gonna print something and then we wanna choose our removable drive and then you basically just navigate to this, okay? Now this is gonna give you an estimation. So two hours and 47 minutes to print this, you know, thing that I have right there. This is not what I was designing on the um, computer and then you basically just hit build and it will begin. Hey guys, so I hope I helped you get something from your 3D imagination through Tinkercad and over to our Dremel Digilab printer to get it printed out into reality. Uh, please stay tuned for more videos on how to get 3D printing awesomeness from your brain into plastic.